Not bringing your camera with you is the fastest way to guarantee that you will fail if you're trying to take photos. So today we're in Quebec City and I'm with some friends. What's you're dark. Up, guys? Oh. All right, let's get off the road. So today we're gonna to be going around Quebec and Quebec City. I'm here with Varys, I'm here with Alex, and I'm just gonna show you some examples of photos of things to avoid, some things not to do so that you can take better photos. One way to guarantee that your photos absolutely fail is to follow the crowd or do the things that everyone else is doing. With Instagram and the ability to just find the most amazing photos and even TikTok and Instagram Reels where you have this kind of copy culture, it can feel really easy just to do the same videos or take the same photos that everyone else is taking. And if you can figure out a way to make your photos unique, Kind of like what those guys are doing over there because they're introducing a prop, they're doing something that is unique to what their model is able to do. So maybe in your case, that's shooting with a unique lens that you have or using a unique tool such as a drone to get a different perspective in an area that is otherwise just all or already all over Instagram. Maybe you go and shoot down a back alley or explore a little bit and don't feel pressured to take the exact same photo that everyone else has already taken. Hey Alex, what uh, what you shooting on there? Um, I have the Sony A7 III with my Sigma 24 to 70 lens. One way to fail is to not use the right gear, but that doesn't mean you have to have the best camera or the perfect lens. It just means that you need to have a camera that you're comfortable with using. And in Alex's case, she's using a Sony. I'm using a Canon. And where did Barris go? Let's go. Let's go find Barris. All right. All right. Ibis wobbles. Everyone complains about the Ibis what wobbles. Is Ibis again? The uh, in-body image stabilization. Yeah, but it's saying that it crashes. They're saying it wobbles anyway. Is that what <sighs> they're the, saying? All the viewers are saying at 15 millimeters. I've got the the corners out here wobble, but oh, I don't know. I think it looks okay. What do you think? When we walk, do you I mean, see it? I think it's. I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> to the cafe. <laughs> Entree. What are we shooting with here? Got my Fuji X-T4. Fuji, Love this camera. Fuji X-T4. Love it, what the, I noticed you're adapting some lenses. Yeah, I'm using Canon lenses with it, EF okay. mount, and I have the Fringer Pro 2 adapter. I like Canon lenses, it's just they're sharper and you know, I like the uh, the variety of EF lenses that are out there. So yeah. So the, the Fuji... So I am part like Canon family, you know? <laughs> partly Canon, <laughs> partly Fuji. Yeah, I know, yeah. Betraying the Fuji just a, just a just, little just bit. A little. So the point here isn't that one camera is better than the other, but using the wrong gear can be disastrous. Oh, hold on. Say that again? You said not one camera is better than the other, except Nikon. I'm going to have to uh, uh -oh. come in on there. All the, all the Z fans out there. <laughs> Sorry. The point here isn't that one camera system is better than the other, but that using the wrong gear can be disastrous. So for example, you wouldn't want to shoot a portrait with a wide angle lens because that wouldn't be flattering. Instead, you'd want to use something like a 35 millimeter, a 50 millimeter, or a 70 to 200. Like, did we uh, did we shoot any photos at 70 to 200? We probably got some portraits. Yeah, I think so. Yeah? You did, maybe. Show, show one right here. Look at that lighting. The lighting looks pretty good, eh? Different focal lights. Lengths. I'm gonna say a focal length and we'll each say what types of photos we think we could take with that photo length. Let's do it. Focal length. Focal length. 15 millimeter. Architecture, definitely. Landscapes. 24 millimeter. Automotive, maybe a bit of architecture. I'm actually stuck. 24 is one I don't use a lot, but I would still go with landscapes. <laughs> 35 millimeter. Some portraits, streets, and automotive, definitely. I'm gonna go with portraits. That was my first one. But also architecture. I, I don't like super wide architecture. I think 35 actually looks a little bit nicer. 50 millimeter. Portraits, all day. Portraits are exactly what I thought. 70 and 85 millimeter. Portraits and detail shots. I'm gonna be a bit controversial and actually say landscape photos. I've taken a few kind of like mountain shots at like 70 millimeter and, and they look pretty good. Anything above 400. So eight, 400, 500, 800. It's not something I shoot often, but I would say wildlife for sure. Wildlife, some action photography. Anything more telephoto than that, it's, it's a big lens. You're like, hold on. 
Did you know that more than half of the buildings in Old City, Quebec are older than 1850? And that's 100 and 172 years old. And I'm pretty sure the building we're in is about that old, but let me, let me show you the view. Is that view not just like, but I'm gonna show you one more view. Woo. Can you see that? Fall leaves, nice view. What more could you ask for? Your photo can fail if it lacks a story. You may not think that there's anything interesting to your photos, but Check out this brick wall right here. It tells us a story. You can see there's these arches. And with old buildings like those in Quebec City, they used brick as structure. So whereas new buildings, we use concrete and steel, this brick right here is actually a way to hold up the building. And if we look at this wall even, you'll notice that there's some variation in the brick pattern. We have bricks that are laid sideways. That's called a stretcher course. This brick, which is laid the opposite way, is called a header course. And what it actually does is it ties various rows or what you call a wife of brick together. So in order to create the structure, we actually have multiple layers of brick. So this brick right here that's turned on its side actually tells us the story of the structure of this building. You might think that a column or a single brick or an arch isn't that exciting, but it actually tells you way more about the building than you actually think it does. So think about this concept when you're working with your photos. Think about the little things, the little details that can actually make a difference and bring a story or tell the story of your photo. When you first get into photography and you start editing your photos, whether you edit in Lightroom or in Capture One, it can be really intimidating because there are just a ton of sliders, a ton of settings, and it's hard to know what everything does. Do you guys feel like you had an understanding of like like Lightroom? Did you feel like, oh, this is easy to use or, or maybe it's like a bit overwhelming? Oh, it's very overwhelming. Like, you know, the what's what's the what's the one slider that everyone uses that they overuse? The clarity slider? I think I, I know think that, so. yeah. The clarity <laughs> slider? It's sharper, like, adds more quality to the shot. Drag it to 100% <laughs> and all of a sudden your photos are amazing and it's like, the most overused thing to the point where your photos are just way over edited. So if you're editing your photos, do not over edit them. Small tweaks are really all you need. I've got a trick up my sleeve. Y you notice you're kind of surrounded by a, a lot of people right now. There's just like what are you people, planning? people everywhere. I'm gonna get a different photo. Okay. Not, just, not just from all these people, but from, from from you <laughs> and you, and you too you won't be able to copy me this time alex is very interested what i'm about to do this is a shot that everybody gets i'm a little confused i got it i got it right there we're gonna go over there and do it bring me the tripod <laughs> got the tripod i got the there tripod so this tip goes along with the one I was saying about using the tools that you have to take different photos than everyone else. This is a 10 stop variable ND filter. And what it does is it just blocks out a ton of light, which allows us to do a long exposure because in the day you can't really do a long exposure because there's a ton of light. So this ND filter is gonna allow us to probably do, I don't know, like a five, 10 second exposure in broad daylight. Three hats, no gloves, and a protein bar. Steve Irwin, Robert Irvin, you make good protein bars. Oh my gosh, it's hard as a rock. This video will probably be titled something like five tips to guarantee failure. And one of the first ways to guarantee failure when you're shooting photos is to not check the weather before you go out and shoot. There's, there is a really nice view over here and we're, we're just kind of waiting for it to clear up. And when it does, I don't know, is it clearing up? Can you see it? There's like a, there's like a road here. There's a mountain. 
and another mountain. No? Okay, check back in two minutes. This is why checking the weather makes such a big difference. Good weather literally means the difference between good lighting or bad lighting. And while sunny weather can work in some conditions, sometimes it's good to have overcast, but with overcast, as you can see, you get rain, you get snow, you get fog, and sometimes your view gets blocked. So make sure you check the weather so that the weather is gonna work with the types of photos that you wanna shoot. Another mistake that can be super simple to make is how you crop your photo. If you crop it incorrectly, it can be absolutely disastrous. Now, we all know that Instagram crops for a four by five aspect ratio, but those photos show up on your grid as a one by one. So if you're gonna crop for Instagram, also see what your photo looks like at a one by one to make sure that, you know, that the head of your subject or their torso isn't gonna be cut off in a weird location. But in addition to how you crop it, you also need to make sure that your photo is level. So if your horizon line or there are building lines or horizontal lines in your photo, they should actually be horizontal and not crooked so that it looks like you accidentally made a mistake. Also, maybe uh, don't stand right in the middle of the road. That's, uh, that's pretty disastrous and a pretty big fail for getting run over by a car. How do you not fail? A lot of that depends on you. It depends on how well you know your gear, how often you take photos and reduce the chance of any of those failure points occurring. The more you get out, the more you use your gear, the better you'll get at taking photos.